So lads, today was a really good content day. And by really good content day, I mean really good content day. Like, the last three weeks, have been moments of the month, this, and new season. And then let's not forget, like, um, moments of the month is coming in, what's it, 10 days? We're gonna see moments of the month. So, yeah, just a very, very interesting couple of weeks for my team. It kind of makes up for the kind of disaster that was season three, but the end of the day, I always say it like, if there's nothing in game, if something's bad in game, I'll talk about it. If something's good in game, I will talk about it as well. So you guys that have not put a foot wrong, really, other than for like the three quarters of an hour, it was impossible to get the, um, the Tatum due to the Thad Young issue. But other than that, other than that, it's, um, it's all been, it's all been good. And then they also gave us like a point guy like he was just a Demi. So we're gonna be ranking these from worst to best lads. So far myself, I have completed two of the pink diamonds. So I have gotten up to, I don't remember who the pink diamond was. Whoever the pink diamond the Larry Hughes one was, I haven't used them yet, I haven't opened the pack yet. Whoever the central playoff diamond was, yeah, oh yeah. Ben Gordon. I actually like Ben Gordon. I just haven't used them. I just have not used them. So um, we're going to be ranking every one of these cards from worst to best. And again, I have not used every one of these cards, but I've used I've used versions of ever almost every one of these cards or cards with basically the same um, animation. So I'll be almost certain as to where they are. So in last place, we have got Darko Milicic. 76 speed, 76 acceleration, 84 block. Does not get the greatest block animations, I will say that. I got all 11 block. I got all 15 blocks, sorry, in one game. Literally, TT offline um, came up, used him with two giant golds, and got lucky that a gold point guard was on the other team, and I just baited him into chase downs every single possession. So we we got that one. It did take a while. It took like 10 minutes for that game, but um, it was 0 0 for like seven, six or seven minutes, which is kind of mad. But uh, yeah, Darko Milicic, he's not good. He doesn't do anything. He's not even a good shot blocker. He's not particularly fast. He's even furry ruby. He's not a good center. Um, so he's in last. Then we've got Steve Novak. So Steve Novak can shoot, but his wingspan is shorter than his height. Base 10. On quick is still okay, but base 10 is still not a great release. His upper is kind of weird. And yeah, he's not... You can't really play him at the, fo at the four. You can't really play him at the three. You can't really play him, period. Um, unless it's like some weird challenge where you need Knicks players. Um, Novak, honestly, not the greatest. Like his Sapphire last year is way better than this card this year. Then we got Derek Fisher. He's just small. Like he's got shifty, he's got base 40. The problem is, is that he's small. And while his stats, defensive stats are good, his defensive um, badges are not great. Other than Clamps doesn't have like ball, or uh, doesn't have pickpocket, ball stripper, or like interceptor. The guy doesn't come with range, and you're gonna have to add it to a Ruby, which no one is. Look, Derek Fisher is not a very good card. Then we're on to the first Amethyst right here. So I'm kind of gonna probably breeze through these. Like this video, hopefully it's not gonna take, like this video could take 25 minutes because there's 30 of these cards. I don't wanna spend too much time talking about the guys that are legitimately worthless. And Kevin Willis, problem is he's slow. His release is terrible. Set shot one is bad. Like, I just hate, I hate set shot one. Um, 79 three ball. Only comes with two shooting badges, but he's got like bad lateral. His main thing is he's a rebounder. He's got a half brick wall, but the problem is again, he's seven foot, so he's not gonna hit a damn screen. He is a tall power forward. I'll give you that, the guy's a tall power forward. But at the end of the day, he does not have much going for him other than that. He really doesn't have much going for him. Gold interceptor is not bad. Um, defensively, he's not horrific, but man, he's slow. Can't really shoot, he's here. Then we got Corliss Williamson. And you might be saying, oh, Cordis Williamson can't shoot. Yeah, but he's not slow. Cordis Williamson plays better defense, way better defense than Kevin um, Willis. He is only 6'7". Six, six, but like, you could chuck in Cordis Williamson offline for the whole year and he'll hold his own. Like, as far as Ruby's defensively go, he's he's like the Ruby version equivalent of a Bobby Jones type player. He's the best defensive Ruby not named. Well, he's just the best defensive Ruby, period. Um. He's also fast, he dunks the ball really well. Problem is, again, he can't shoot, which is why he's not higher on the list. But I mean, if they give him a 73 ball, this guy might be somewhere in the middle of this list. He's really, really good. Other, he's really good, other than the fact that he can't shoot. 
which is why he's down this low. Then we got Big Baby Davis. Big Baby Davis can kind of shoot. He had 38 last year. He doesn't have 38 this year. He can't dribble. His defense is not... It's not good. It's not absolutely horrific. Most of his stuff is in like dunking a post game and inside finishing. But he's got a decent player build. Um, I really like this. I think... I can't remember what the version was. Flash Big Baby Davis last year. I actually thought was extremely underrated. But nah, he's... I probably put him... He should be below Cordis Williamson. There's no reason why Cordis Williamson should be behind Big Baby Davis. Then we got Eric Gordon. So Eric Gordon offers quite a lot on offense. So he's got really good speed and acceleration. He's an 86 ball handle, and he's got a decent driving dunk. He's got a good release. Um, his defense, again, his stats aren't bad. The badges aren't quite there, but his stats aren't bad. And with that speed, he's going to be a competent defender. He's got a good wingspan, and not the greatest height, but he's got a good wingspan. He's going to play quite well for you. And this is like the big kind of gap where you're like, you know what, he's actually one of the better rubies. Like if, if I was playing with ruby, if there was a ruby we can limit it, he might make my team. Then we got Ace and Kid. So we've only seen one diamond and we're gonna go to, um, a, or one pink, one, say amethyst, and we're gonna go to a diamond. Or say two amethysts, we saw a big baby. I just hate Jason Kidd. Like stats wise, he should be probably the best, and by the way, he should be probably the best diamond in the game. Just the, the guy can't shoot. Like that 85 three ball may as well be like 60. And that's just kind of the problem is that he is tall. Like look, maybe I'm being harsh on the guy because he, but he just doesn't play offense. He can't dunk, he can't shoot. He legitimately does not play offense. And, like, look, Corliss Williamson's a spectacular defender as well. And I'm not going to put um, him any higher. Like, Jason Kidd, he's, his dribbling's not even good. He doesn't even move well. Like, no, nah, he's 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 not... A, maybe he's not this bad. Maybe I'm, like, way too low on him, but he's not awful. And we got Ruby Nick Anderson. I think Ruby Nick Anderson, even though he's not going to dribble the ball very well, I think he's just Eric Gordon with slightly better defense. Like, he doesn't have as much speed. He's got a better release. 93 three-pointer, decent driving dunk, limitless. Doesn't have chef, but he's got a lot of good badges. He's a really nice 3 and D player, and he's 6'6 with 6'9 wingspan, so he's not bad at all. And we got Calderon. Now, I don't, like Calderon over Jason Kidd. Screw it, no, Calderon's dropping below Jason Kidd. Calderon's not good. Like Calderon is basically his, his Ruby. He honestly is just his Ruby. Like not even great speed. He does it, he's shifty. He, he doesn't play defense, though. He doesn't play any defense, regardless of these stats and badges. So I'm going to put him here, but, like, call around Ritten Kate and Jason Kidd are very close. One of them just plays offense, one of them just plays defense. But, like, no, the guy doesn't even come a quick first step. Come on, he's he's got to be down this low. We get Terrence Mann. Terrence Mann has got that base 115. It's his own release. I could not find, or the life of me find a green win, though, in this release. His dribble sigs, though, are really good. Uh, 86 three-pointer, 87 speed, 87 acceleration, 80 driving dunk, which is pretty decent. Defense, he's all right, especially with his badges. Problem is, again, no quick first step. If he came with quick first step, I think we'd be looking at one of the, a decent card. But, like, that is not a cheap badge. And also, again, not coming with a badge that is kind of neat. Like, it's, it's one of those badges that you would just assume every card nowadays is going to have quick first step. Um, It is important, and he doesn't have it. So, he's, he's a little bit lower. Then we got Thad Young. Thad Young doesn't do anything particularly well. He doesn't do anything badly. He's a pretty decent defender. He's moderately fast. He's a pretty decent shooter. His handle is okay. And his height and player build is alright. He's meh. He's so meh. Which is why he's kind of in around the middle of this. Then we got Otto Porter. And you might be saying, why is Otto Porter so low? He's not great. Like, defensively. Like, Otto Porter, stats wise, is barely better than Thad Young. He just has good shooting badges. He doesn't get any good defensive badges. He doesn't get quick for his step. He gets handles for days for absolutely no reason. Because he's not going to dribble the ball with these sigs. He's got a base 63, which is one of the most inconsistent releases in the entire game. Like, yeah, I get it. He gets sniper. He gets blinders. He doesn't even get range or chef. Or sorry, he gets range. He doesn't even get chef. Which doesn't act the end. It doesn't matter that much. Like, look, I don't rate auto that highly. I really, really do not rate auto Porter that highly. Then we got Marcus Camby. And you might be saying, like, I'm definitely gassing it on Camby. Camby, as far as interior defense goes, is spectacular. Like, he's got half chase and artist, Pogo, Intimidator, Rebound Chaser, Post Team Lockdown, Rim Protector, as well as, like, Goal Clamps. The only badge is, badge is defense is Menace. He's got 80 lateral and 97 block, and his rebounding is spectacular. So he's going to be a really just solid interior center. He's a little bit undersized to start, like, paint match at 6'11", but I think just below the halfway point is probably the best spot for him. Then we're on to our Amethyst. We got Wes Matthews. So Wesley Matthews is a good card. Half clutch shooter. 
I, if they gave him range, he would be really damn good. So he has base dribble style, but he's base 38, which is a really good release. He's got 93 three ball, unbelievably good defensive stats, especially on the perimeter, not even terrible interior defense. Got pretty much all the key perimeter defense badges on gold. No quick first step again is a bit of a problem, but he's a 3 and D cone. It's not the end of the world. But he's a player that if he had range, it would help him out a lot, but a really good card, a really good card as is. Then after Wesley Matthews, we got our first pink diamond as Tim Hardaway. He's just too small. Like he's six foot with a six three wingspan. He doesn't come with range extender. He doesn't come with chef. So you have to add those badges to him. He doesn't even come with sniper. Defensively, he actually comes with pretty much all the defensive badges you want from maybe you want brick wall as well. But like, unless you're a huge Tim Hardaway fan. Like again, I'm gonna get him for it because I want to hate him. Um, I'm gonna get him. I might use him in like all time at me heat challenges, but like, nah, he's, he's not up to much. He's really not up to much. Then we got Byron Scott. So Byron Scott, 89 speed, 89 acceleration, 92 three ball. He's got 89 lateral quickness, which is not bad. 80 driving dunk. He's got gold sniper, but he's also got like half catch, catch and shoot, half corner specialist. He's got like gold limitless spot up as well. No chef. He got gold quick first step. Defensively, he's pretty solid as well. Um, obviously 6'3", decent enough wingspan. His upper makes his really so cash. It doesn't feel slow. He's got quick dribble style Scotty behind the back. Like this is a really decent card. This is a really, really decent card to run the point guard. And maybe I'm, I think I might be a bit too low on him. And now this is a kind of controversial one. Bogut. I'm gonna put Bogut here. I'm gonna put Bogut here. Like, Bogut is, he's like 14, I think, right now. Number 14. But like, you might be saying, oh, 69 speed, 62 acceleration. It is slow, but let's look at his defense. I don't know, maybe I'm being blind about the defensive stats and defensive badges, but like, has a pure interior. He can do a bit of damage. Huge body, get him to set screens, and he could do damage on the defensive end. Like, he's gonna be a really, really solid defender because of all his, uh, anim or because of all his attributes, or say not attributes, uh, badges, and attributes as well. So, I think I might be gassed and put him at 14, but that's where he's going. Here we go, Hersey Hawkins. So, it's just a weird one, like, Hersey Hawkins does not move anywhere near as well as someone like um, uh, Byron, Byron Scott. But 39, base 39 is actually a really good release. He's got some more shooting badges, doesn't come with limp. I'm gonna move him behind Byron Scott. I'm gonna move Hersey behind Byron Scott. I'm actually gonna move Byron Scott to above Bogut as well. But like Hersey is kind of like better defensive Byron Scott. Like he, Hersey's really, really good on defense. The problem is again, he struggles to create for himself. He plays more like a two than he does like a point guard. And he actually is a good shooter, so I can't knock him too much. We got Larry Johnson. He's just fine. He's just a jack of all trades. He does everything at a decent rate. I don't like I don't like the release, I don't mind it either. He comes with most of the defensive badges except for clamps. He rebounds the ball quite well. You can play him at the four, you can probably play him at the three. Just a solid, solid player in here to um almost start the top 10. I think this is number 11 now is Joe Smith. Joe Smith's outside of shooting, his stats are very, very good. His badges are actually very solid as well, other than not having clamps, which isn't the end of the world. Um, he does need some shooting badges, which is a problem, and his jumper is, it's not a great release, and it's not the greatest rating. Well, it's, it's literally, it's worthy release, but it's not the greatest rating. Um, he's not bad. He's really, really not, um, not bad at all, but just, he's tall. Stats-wise, you would think he'd be a bit lower, but his height's good, so that is why he is just a little bit outside our top 10. And number 10, we've got Amethyst Trevor Reza. You got Amethyst Trevor Reza here, 89 speed, 89 acceleration, 88 three ball. He's got a 90 driving dunk. Um, he's also got really good perimeter defense, good steal rating. He's got all the key defense about you need, quick first step. Yeah, he doesn't have Ranger Sniper because pretty much nobody here seems to have Ranger Sniper. He's at base 32, power dribble style is not the greatest, but overall six to eight wing. I like the card. He's starting off top 10. And number nine, Mashman, he's a giant. Like you're looking stats wise and you're like, how the hell is this guy higher? And this high, he's a giant. Dude seven two, guy into seven two. Decent steal rating. Can hit the midi. Yeah, chuck him in here at nine. So um, then we have got number eight, Steven Jackson. So caveat, you gotta give this guy quick first step. 
You've got to give this guy. He feels so sluggish without this badge. But for me, he's like poor man's Rudy Gay. So he doesn't have quite the player ability Rudy Gay, but literally clone animation wise. He's got an 86 three ball, which is good. Um, and again, Rudy Gay's release, we know how good that is. His speed's pretty nice. Lateral 87 is all right. He's then got 84 steel. Like his stats are all good. He is literally just, he's Rudy Gay light. He's not, like the reason why he's not this high is he's have to have badges to him. And there is still a, quite a bit of a difference, in my opinion, between him and Rudy Gay. Like, maybe not. Maybe, honestly, maybe not. Maybe it's just speed. How is Steven Jackson close? Oh, yeah, he gets like hustle plus hustle, passing, vision, passing. Okay, that makes sense. But, um, yeah, I didn't feel like he was anywhere near as good as Rudy Gay, but they're so similar, I had to put him high. Then we have got number seven, Brooke Lopez. Outside of 70 speed and 70 acceleration, Brook Lopez is actually not bad at anything. His interior defense is immaculate. His shooting is good. He comes with gold range. He comes with half catch shoot, coin special set shooter. His release is nice. It's Brook Lopez, Brook Lopez. Um, really good in the post. Tall, strong, wide body, sets big screens. Problem is perimeter defense and speed. Like that is the only problem with this card. So that is the reason why we're looking at him at number seven and not at like number three, two, or one. If he had like 80 speed, he would be pushing for number top five spot. What's your top three spot? Number six, we got Hayward. Now Hayward, I wasn't that excited by him when he came out, but he gets a gold range. His speed is mediocre. His jumper is chicken. He's not going to miss with that jumper. He's got a 93 ball. Defensively, he's solid with all the key defensive badges for the perimeter. He can, he's 6'8", can play at the 2. Although his wingspan is short, he's still 6'8". So 6'8", with a small wingspan, is still going to feel like 6'7", maybe? So, he's going to be good. He's going to be really nice. And, like, these top cards are all going to be pretty good. And number 5, we got Zebo. Now, Zebo's going to be bully ball. Like, it's bully ball. Look at these, like, defensive stats. He's got some good bad as well. Like, the card that I really compare Zebo to is... Um, oh my god, I forgot the guy's name. It's not Xavier McDaniels, Antonio McDice. Like, I would compare Zebo to Antonio McDice. So, like, McDice is a little bit faster, got a better standing dunk and driving dunk, and dribbles the ball better. New York can dribble the ball, McDice, anyway. Zebo's wider build, way better shooter um, release wise. I say rate, way better shooter stats wise, not as good release wise, but he's stronger. Um, he's going to be a little bit faster on defense. And again, things like half back down Punisher, like allow you to mash really, really easily. Um, he'll hit shots when he's wide open. And he's also got half brick wall set screens, gold interceptor, half rebound chaser. I think he's a really solid card. And I think he's worth his spot in this list at number five. And number four, we got Pink Diamond Ben Gordon. 6'3", but he's got a 6'8 wingspan, which is very good. Quick dribble style, base 22 on quick, which is really good. James Harden behind the back, which is again, really, really good. He's got limitless spot up on gold. He's got half sniper, mismatch expert on half as well. Volume shooter, dead eye, catch and shoot. 87 lateral, 87 steel. He's also got half pickpocket, gold interceptor, gold clamps, 95 speed with ball. His dunk isn't great. And that's the only problem is he's not gonna be jamming it on people. But like, he does everything else well. This is a really good point. This is like a Jamarant level card. I'm gonna be completely honest. This card is like, he's Ja without the dunk. His release is probably better than Jazz as well. Like, this is a borderline jam around level card. Like, the gap between, is, I think Zevo's good, and then Ben Gordon. Like, Ben Gordon is the start of the really good cards. There, is about four, there are four really, really good cards here, and Ben Gordon's the start of it. Then we got DeAndre Ayton at three. D-Rob Light. 79 speed, really good steal. Half interceptor for a center. Like, at seven foot one, there are no other centers that are like that. A release that, for some reason, is, it's good. I was a greening consistently with a 65 rated, um, three point rated, um, and for some reason I can't green with this card. He's got cash and shoot coin special. I just can't green with him. I don't know why. But um, 77 lateral is pretty okay. But that high steer rating, high block, big player build as well, long arms. He's gonna be decent in the post. Got rise at post finish and drops there at back down punisher. He's also got strength rating of 92, so he will just bully people inside. Yeah, DeAndre Ayton's well worth the spot number three. Number two, Larry Hughes. Larry Hughes, second, secondary point guard, even though um, it only is a primary there. 84 three ball, 89 speed, 89 acceleration. But look at his defense. Look at his defensive stats. 
tendencies aren't the greatest, but these defensive stats with half clamps, half ball stripper, half interceptor, menace, pickpocket, ankle braces. Like, he's legit. Outside of probably like Dark Matter Payton, you could argue he's the number one point guard in the game. His defense is 99. His jumper is chicken. He's got shifty. Like, again, yeah, guy doesn't have handles for days. So you're not going to want to... He's, he's going to be like a better Marcus Smart. If you can get him even to like silver limitless spot up, he becomes an absolute threat. He becomes a real threat from the catch. So he's like a modern day, better and bigger Marcus Smart. And at number one, it's obvious, like it's, it's Tatum. Tatum is number one, no question about it. Tatum is spectacular. Like defense, absolutely elite. Offense, elite. Shooting, elite. Movement, not going to be the greatest, but his release became elite. Like, no, nah, no, nah, Jason Tatum, he's coming straight into my squad, no question about it. And unlike the last time where I thought Brown was better than, um, than DeRozan, no matter how good I think Aiton and how good I think Hughes are, and even Gordon, none of them even come close to Tatum. So yeah, that is it, lads. That is the video. That's ranking them from worst to best. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.